We'll look at some applications in this video with systems of linear equations. The first one is uh, just in two variables. The next one will be in three variables, but I want to demonstrate both of these examples using a matrix. So in this example, Kelly has a total of $30,000 invested in two uh, municipal bonds that have yields of 4% and 5% interest per year. If the interest Kelly receives from the bonds in a year is $1,320, how much does she have invested in each bond? All right, so we have two investments. We want to find out how much she has in each one. We have two unknowns, two variables. We can call those X and Y. If we have two unknowns, we need two equations. And those two equations are going to come from how much she has invested total. And we don't know how much she has invested in each investment. So we'll call investment 1x, investment 2y. But if we add those together, we know that she has $30,000 combined. And we also know something about how much interest that she earns. We don't know the interest in each individual investment, but we know that she's making 4% and 5%. So she makes 4% of the amount that she has in investment one. She makes 5% that she has in investment two. If we add those two amounts together, that will give us the total interest of 1320. So these are our two equations, and we can convert this to a matrix. Again, we can we could also use substitution elimination method when it comes to our online homework. If you see an example like this, to where it's a word problem and it's only in two variables, um, you can use a matrix, but but you can also use substitution elimination method if it's only in two variables. The online homework system is not going to know how you worked it out. It's just looking for that final answer. But we're going to demonstrate this using matrices just so we can get the practice here. All right, so our first step, right, we're working in terms of columns. That first column, I already have that one in the first position. So I can move on to that next step of getting everything else in that column to be zero. And so I want this 0 0.04 to become zero. And we do that by adding the additive inverse to row two. The additive inverse of 0 0.04 is a negative 0 0.04. Of course, we're multiplying that negative 0 0.04 times row one because we can only add rows, not constants. So the first row remains the same. And now in this second row, let's see what we have here. We have 0 0.04, 0 0.05, 13, 20, and we're gonna to add to that the second row, uh, sorry, the first row times negative 0 0.04. So one times negative 0 0.04 is negative 0 0.04, negative 0 0.04. And 30,000 times negative 0 0.04 is negative 1,200. We'll add those together, we get zero. 0 0.05 minus 0 0.04 is 0 0.01. And 1,320 minus 1,200 is 120. So the first column is done. So we'll move to the next column. We want the second entry in the second column to be one, which can be accomplished by multiplying by the multiplicative inverse. And the multiplicative inverse is always one divided by that number, one divided by 0 0.01, which is the same thing as 100. That's, that's equivalent to multiplying by 100. So 
So that's zero, one, and 120 times 100, that is 12,000. And now for our last step, we want everything else in that second column to be zeros. So we want that one right there to be zero. And we can do that by adding its additive inverse. Row one plus a negative one times row two. Okay, so row one minus row two. Row one is one, one, 30,000. And negative one times row two is zero, negative one, negative 12,000. That is one, zero, 18,000. We have this in reduced row reduced form, only ones and zeros here. And we can interpret this as X equals 18,000. That's how much she has invested in the first savings account. And Y equals 12,000, which is how much she has invested in the second account. Now for our second example, we're going to see that we have three variables. So we're going to have a matrix and three variables, three rows, three columns. In this case, we have a theater that has a seating capacity of 900 and it charges $4 for children, $6 for students and $8 for adults. You see the three variables, children, students and adults. At a certain screening with full attendance, there were half as many adults as children and students combined. The receipts totaled $5,600. How many children attended the show? Okay, so first we need to be able to write our three equations because since we have three variables, three unknowns, we need three equations to be able to solve these. Okay, so let's, let's begin with um, finding the, the three equations, then we'll set that up as a matrix. Okay, so, so we don't know how many children, students, and adults there were, so we can call those X, Y, and Z but we do know that there were 900 people in attendance. Okay, so we can say that if we were to add the children, students, and adults, we know that sums to 900. Okay, and, and we also know how much the receipts were, right? We know that there were $4 per child, per child. there were $6, for each student and $8 per adult. And if we added the, re the receipts of each one of those together, that would give us 5,600. Okay, that, and that's only two equations. We need a third equation, and this is uh, going to come from the fact that they said that there were half as many adults as children and students combined. Now, how do we, how do we write that? All right, so that means that the number of adults, which we're letting represent, uh, be represented by Z, there were half as many adults as there were children and students combined, right? The number of children and students combined. So if we were to add a number of children and students, the number of adults will be half that many. Okay, so we can write that as z equals one half times x plus y. And we want to write this in the same form as the other equations. We want the x, y, z on one side. So let's simplify this sum uh, to get one half x plus one half y, uh, and then subtract z from both sides to get that z on the on one side by itself. Uh, now I don't like the fraction, so let's multiply everything by two. So x plus y minus two z. Okay, and that be can become our third equation, x plus y minus two z equals zero. Okay, 
So now that we have our three equations, now we can write that in matrix form. One, 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 900, four, six, eight, 5,600, one, one, negative two, zero. Okay, and now we can proceed with putting this in row reduced form by getting our ones and zeros working in columns from left to right. All right, so I've cleaned this up here, make it easier to um, have more room to work. All right, so my first step is I want the first entry in the first column to be one. I already have that. So now I can move on to setting all the other entries in the first column to be zero. And so I take my row two and I add the additive inverse, which is a negative four. I'm multiplying that by row one, the row with the one in it. I can do the same thing with the row three. Add the additive inverse, which is a negative one times row one. All right, so row two. Label that row two minus four, row one. Minus four times row one, that's negative four, negative four, negative four, and negative 3,600. We add those together. That's zero, two, four, 2,000. Zero, two, four, two thousand, and then and then row three minus row one is one one negative two zero minus row one that's a minus a negative one negative one negative one negative nine hundred zero zero negative three, negative 900. All right, so column one is done. Next, we move on to column two. We want this second entry of column two to become one. So we can multiply by the multiplicative inverse, multiplying by one half times row two. That's the only row that will change. That is zero, one, two, one thousand. And we want everything else in column two to become zero. We already have a zero in row three, so we only need to get that uh, one in the first row to become zero. And we do that by adding the additive inverse, which is negative one times row two. Row one minus row two is what we have. One, 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 900 minus row two, zero, negative one, negative two, negative 1,000, that's one, zero, negative one, negative 100. Everything else will remain the same. And column two, is done. So now we can move to column three to where we want the third entry in the third column to become one. So we multiply by the multiplicative inverse, negative one third.
is zero, zero, one, positive 300. And our last step is to get everything else in the third column to be zeros. And so that can be accomplished by adding to row one, the additive inverse. The additive inverse of negative one is a positive one times R3. And R2, adding the additive inverse of two, which is a negative two, R1 plus R3. is one zero zero two hundred R two minus two times row three negative two times row three is zero zero negative two negative six hundred zero one zero four hundred and then row three stays the same and it should give us our answer uh, the number of children students adults we have 200 student uh, 200 children 400 students and 300 adults.